What's going on YouTube family? Antoine Butler here and yes I am back with another word. The word that God has given me for this video is that God gives seed to the sower. One more time the title is God gives seed to the sower. Now what this means is that is using the analogy of a farmer that plants seed, saying that God gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. That's over in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10. But it's talking about money. It really can be applied to anything. But the Apostle Paul is teaching about giving. And that God gives seed to the sower. That if you have a heart to give, if you have a heart to sow, then God will give you the seed to sow. And if you have the heart to sow, he will also increase your resources for sowing. The Bible says over in Genesis chapter 8 verse 22, that as long as the earth remains, there shall be seed, time, and harvest. Come on now, there shall be seed, time, and harvest. So when you sow, you will also reap. It's very interesting that even God operates by this very principle. Remember, the Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So when God, come on now. When God wanted the relationship with his people back, he sent his one and only son, Jesus. He gave. And as we give our lives to Jesus Christ, God is reaping that harvest. He's reaping the harvest of giving his son. So even God operates by this very principle. Now, some people always say, well, I don't believe that. That's not true. It's all over this Bible. I could go through story after story, Old Testament, New Testament, and show you it's in the word. The Bible also says that be not deceived. God is not mocked, but whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. It said, be not deceived. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap whether it's money or whatever the case may be. So if you do not like what you're reaping in your life right now, then change what you're sowing because it's a spiritual law that you are going to reap what you sow, good or bad. The Bible even talks about, I'm going to read it in a little bit, that if you sow a little, you're going to reap a little. But if you sow a lot, you're going to reap a lot. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Come on now. Whatever you sow, you will reap. It's a spiritual law. Sometimes I talk about how you treat people. You're going to reap what you sow, good or bad. It's a spiritual law. Eventually, that law is going to kick in. And you're going to see the evidence in your life of what you have been sowing. Now, some people say, well, if I had more, then I would give. No, it does not work like that. Because the truth is, is that if you cannot give with a little, you will not give when you have a lot. If you, if you won't give where you are right now, you will not give when you have more. Come on now. It's a condition of the heart. You're supposed to give as God leads you to give. It could be to a ministry. It could be to a homeless shelter. It could be to somebody on the street. It could, to be, it could be for whoever. But you are to give as God leads you to give. You're not supposed to listen to what your money or look at what your money is telling you to give. It does not work like that. Come on now. God is looking for good stewards. 
to be good stewards and to do godly things with their resources. So before God puts you over or funnels an abundance of resources into your hand, you have to prove yourself that you will listen to God and do godly things with those resources. Come on now, I remember when I first started hearing the voice of God, immediately God had told me to start going back to a church that I grew up in, so I immediately started going back. And now God started telling me to sow into that ministry. So at first it was very little, so I started sowing. But each week God started telling me to give more until at the time I was on a tight budget. This was a long time ago when God first, like I said, I started hearing the voice of God really clearly until it started getting into the money that I needed for the bills. So now when it got to that point, it was like, okay, God, you're asking me or telling me to give this, but I need this money for the bills. So what did I do? Of course, I obeyed God. And when I obeyed God, miracles would happen. Money would come in from other areas. At the time, I was thinking that the finances I was getting was going to have to come through my job and through my paycheck. But God has a million ways to bless you. He has a million ways to take care of you. The job is a resource. God is the source. God has multiple resources. He can get the finances to you. So each and every time I ended up with more, when I gave, I ended up with more than I had before. And it was outside of the paycheck of the job. Now, God, of course, can increase your job paycheck, but God was teaching me this principle. So, of course, ever since then, me and my wife, you know, we've got married. We have done a lot. But each time we sow and give, God increases our resources for sowing. Why? Because we obey God. I remember one time I was asleep on the couch and God showed me a homeless shelter that's downtown. And he was telling me, I want you to start sewing into this homeless shelter. At the time, I had never heard of the homeless shelter before, but I immediately got up, looked on the internet. I'm like, that's the one God showed me. And we've been sewing periodically into this homeless shelter ever since. Sometimes God leads us to sow into various ministries. It's one or two we sow into continuously, but then every now and then God might lead us to sow into another one. Sometimes I may be out on the street. I may be in the grocery store. If God leads me to give something to somebody, understand that I just obey God. And each and every time, it comes back multiplied. If you remember the story with the feeding of the two fish and five loaves, the little boy gave up the two fish and the five loaves. They gave it to Jesus. Jesus held it up and blessed it and it began to multiply. Come on now. Jesus is over the storehouse. He's the head of the church. Come on now. So when you give and sow into various ministries as God is leading you, Jesus is over the storehouse. Come on now. Understand this. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. But whatsoever man sows, that shall he also reap. When Jesus ran Peter's boat over with the fish, remember, Peter let Jesus go teach from that boat before this happened. He sold his boat. And when he sold his boat, Jesus afterwards, he told him to launch out into the deep and you will catch a great drought of fish. But Peter sold his boat first. It goes on and on. Well, let's get into the word. Let me read this. Second Corinthians chapter eight. And this is starting at no second Corinthians chapter nine. And this is starting at verse six. Remember this, a farmer who plants a few seeds will get a small crop, but the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. 
it's talking about if you sow sparingly, you shall reap sparingly. But if you sow bountifully, you will reap bountifully. Okay, verse 7. You must each decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. Wow. So God will provide all that you need. And then it says you will have plenty left over to share with others. So it's not just for you. God's going to increase your resources for sowing if you have a heart to sow. This is coming right out the word. As the scriptures say, they share freely and give generously to the poor. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. For God is the one who provides seed for the farmer and then bread to eat. In the same way, he will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. Yes, you will be enriched in every way so that you can always be generous. And when we take your gifts to those who need them, they will thank God. So two things will result from this ministry of giving. The needs of believers in Jerusalem will be met and they will joyfully express their thanks to God. Come on now. Come on now. So it talks about God will give seed to the sower or the farmer and bread to the eater in the same way he will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. So God gives seed to the sower and he will increase your resources for sowing so that you always have something to sow and to give. Come on now. We are blessed to be a blessing. How are you going to bless somebody if you do not have anything? How can you bless somebody else if you don't have anything? Come on now. God is looking for good stewards that will obey God. We obey God, not money. We love God, not money. Money is a tool and money is a resource. And when you understand that and you obey God over your money, see, this is what you must understand. When you sow and when you give, the reason that God says he loves a cheerful giver is because when you, you give something, it, it, it has some value to you. It means something to you. So when you obey God over that, that's why God loves it. Come on now. Come on now. That's why God loves it. Glory to his name. Well, with that being said, that is the word that God placed in my heart for this video. So as always, until the next video, I just want to say, God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.